In our previous two videos, we discussed how we go and select a power MOSFET based on conduction losses and then later on on switching losses. And we said, okay, if I'm only allowed 200 milliwatts worth of conduction losses, which MOSFET would be suitable? But how do we decide how much losses we can have in our MOSFET in terms of how much conduction losses or how much switching losses? Uh, and this is what we're going to discuss in this video. Okay, so for simplicity, let us say that I am trying to design a 25 watt power supply. And let us say that my efficiency has to be better than 96%. If I've got a 20 watt, uh, 5 watt power supply, that is always my P out, efficiency 96, that means that my input power would be 25 watts divided by 96%, which gives me 26 watts, and therefore my grand total power loss budget is going to be 1 watt. This is the maximum that I can lose in order to meet that 96% efficiency. We call this the power loss budget. But how do I divide this uh, between the various components of my power supply? That's the grand total that I can lose. Let us say that we have a simple buck converter. And a pragmatic way of dividing this up is to allow 40% for the top switch, 40% for the bottom switch, and the rest, in my case, 20% uh, for the magnetics. If you're designing a flyback, we usually divide them one third, one third, one third, because uh, the magnetic losses in a flyback is bigger than a buck. Okay, so, uh, I can lose a grand total of 1 watts. 40% of that means that in my switch I can use 400 milliwatts. I need to decide how much of that is going to be my switching losses and how much of that is going to be conduction losses. Uh, and a good approach is to make this relative to the duty. Make the conduction loss relative to the duty. And that is because conduction loss is proportional to the duty. It makes sense. Um, if you consider you've got a power supply with a duty of 1%, so it's conducting for 1% of the time, but it's off. The switch is off for 99% of the time. Obviously, conduction losses is going to be low. And then imagine you've got another power supply which has got a duty of 99%, so it's on and conducting for 99% of the time, and it's off for only 1% of the time. Conduction loss is going to be huge. So, because I can work out my conduction losses much easier and more accurately than my switching losses, I can allocate intelligently proportional to the duty how much conduction losses I can have, and then whatever is left then would be the allocation for my switching loss. Also, please bear in mind that you cannot have low conduction loss and low switching loss at the same time. That is because the RDS of the FET is inversely proportional to its capacitance. And of course, RDS determines our conduction losses and uh, the capacitances determine our switching losses. This makes sense. Imagine if you have got your MOSFET and this internal drain source resistance, you go and buy one that has got one pico ohm of, of uh, resistance, then the conduction loss will be near zero. That's because, as per our other video, conduction loss is equal to ID RMS squared times RDS. In order for manufacturers to obtain a really low RDS, what they do is they increase the die size of the MOSFET. They make the area bigger so that the resistance comes down. But of course, if you make the area bigger, the capacitance goes up. And of course, we know from the previous video that the uh, switching losses of a MOSFET is proportional to the capacitances. So you cannot have low switching loss and low conduction loss at the same time. This one I can calculate accurately, the other one I can't. So I'm going to try and allocate 
intelligently how much losses I can have to meet this 96% for conduction and what is left is my budget for my switching loss. So if I make my conduction loss proportional to the duty, we said that we're going to allocate 40% for the top switch. So 40% of one watt is 400 milliwatts. Let's for simplicity say that my duty is 50%. Therefore, I'm going to allocate 50% of this for my conduction loss. So I would say my PCOND would be my duty times total budget, which was 400 milliwatts. So I can do 200 milliwatts worth of uh, conduction losses, and the rest is for my switching loss. If my duty is less than 25%, then I limit it at 25%. So I put a lower threshold for this of 25%. Uh, so if I've got a 1% uh, duty power supply, I will still allocate 25% for my conduction loss and the same with an upper threshold. So um, I would limit that for the duty of smaller than or equal to 25% and bigger than or equal to 75%. I will, I will allocate a maximum of 75% and a minimum, minimum of 25%, and the rest is for my switching loss. So that's it. That's how I divide up my, um, my, my losses as, as to how much I'm allowed. And then after that, I can go and uh, work out my RDS and then select my MOSFET exactly how we showed in the other video. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I hope to see you at one of our workshops. Thank you.